Welcome to the Crazy Head Chemist. So today we're doing another video on thermochemistry, so let's get moving. Bam! So Hess's law calculation number one is today. What is the enthalpy change for the following reaction? Here's the reaction. I've got carbon on the reactant side. I've got hydrogen on the reactant side. Two hydrogens, in fact. And then on the product side, I have methane, which is CH4 on the product side. So, puzzles. Remember the puzzle pieces. We're going to put them together. So you need to review the hints of Hess's Law calculations the previous lesson. Okay? So, from a table, you're going to find the following information. And this information is for coming from the appendix in the back of your textbook or the CRC Handbook of Chemistry and Physics. So, you will find this information. This information will be given to you in a problem. Somehow, I need to put all my ducks in a row like I have done here. So that is the first hint. When you have these reactions, you're going to put all your ducks in a row. That is all the arrows in the row, separating the reactants on the left from the products on the right. Then you're going to also keep the ducks in the row with what you're asked to solve for. What you're asked to solve for is to carbon hydrogens giving methane. And really what we want is we want to solve for this delta H of this particular reaction. So this is a one-step reaction um, on the bottom there that we're solving for, right? What is the enthalpy change for that following reaction? That's a one-step process. We just can't do that one-step process, so we have to take the multi-step approach, just like climbing that mountain, taking steps along the switchback that we had did before, that we'd done before, okay? So let's solve this problem and see how this works out. So I've rewritten on this slide all the given information, okay? And then I'm gonna step you through this. So again, all your ducks are in a row. We're gonna take the puzzle pieces and put them together. Sometimes you need to flip them, sometimes you need to turn them, whatever you need to do, we're gonna do all of those here at different times of this problem. So. Keeping your ducks in a row, this is critical. This is what we want. This is what was given in the problem initially is solving for the delta H of this value. Okay, so you can start anywhere you want to on the puzzle. You can start on the borders if you want. You can start with uh, something that really uh, you can find as far as a figure in the middle if you wanted to. So it doesn't really matter. So I'm going to start off with this hydrogen. I see it on the reactant side, and it has a stoichiometric coefficient of a 2 on the reactant side. So I need to ask myself, of the three reactions up above, where is hydrogen? Okay, and here is hydrogen. So the question is also, is hydrogen only in that reaction as H2? I'm looking for just H2. I'm not talking about, yeah, hydrogen is another reaction in with methane and with water, but that doesn't apply. I am looking for just hydrogen as H2 by itself. So it's only in reaction three in the three reactions above that were given in the problem from the textbook or the appendix somewhere or the CRC handbook of chemistry and physics. So it is in reaction number three. So on the very bottom reaction here, the net reaction that I'm looking for, okay, it's on the reactant side and it has a stoichiometric coefficient of a 2. In reaction number 3, is it on the reactant side? That's a yes. So that is correct. It's on the correct side. Does it have a stoichiometric coefficient of a 2? The answer is a no. So I need to multiply reaction number 3 by what? A 2. So I'm going to multiply reaction 3 by a 2, and I get the following reaction right there. Notice I've distributed that 2 stoichiometric coefficient throughout the entire reaction of the reactants and the product. Now, what do I do to that number that's associated with the original reaction number 3 that is negative 286? I multiply that reaction by 2, so I'm going to multiply that number, negative 286, by 2. And I get this following number of negative 572. Okay, These are all in kilojoules, as that delta H above shows you. All right, so that's reaction number 3. We can cross out reaction number 3, essentially, on the up above what was given originally. Now I'm going to look for something else. I'm going to look for this CH4. I'm going to find the CH4. So it's in the net reaction on the product side with the stoichiometric coefficient of a 1. So in the above three reactions, where do you find the CH4, the methane? 
It's right here in reaction number two. So, on the below reaction, it's on the product side with a stoichiometric coefficient of a one. On reaction number two, it's on the reactant side and it has a stoichiometric coefficient of a one. So the stoichiometry is correct, but it's on the incorrect side. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna take reaction number two up above and we're going to flip it. So we're gonna put, take the reactants, put them on the product side and the products and place them on the reactant side, but stay with the stoichiometric coefficients there. And that's what I've done right here. So you see that the carbon dioxide and the water were on the product side, now they are on the reactant side. And the methane and the oxygen, they were on the reactant side, now they're on the product side. But I have stayed with the same stoichiometry on the problem. So what do I do to that negative 892 that was given in the problem? So I flip the reaction, so I'm gonna multiply this by a negative one. So effectively, I'm changing the sign of the 892, and now it's a positive 892. You don't have to write the positive in front, but I just did that to emphasize that you are multiplying by the negative one. It was negative to begin with. All right, so now I have my components here on the reactant and product side of two of them. I have the third one to deal with, and that is the carbon, and I've just circled that. So where is carbon? It is only in reaction number one. Again, it's not in reaction two, it's not in reaction three, as solely only carbon. So on the bottom reaction, the one that I want, the one that I'm solving for, the carbon is on the reactant side and it has a stoichiometric coefficient of a one. In reaction number one that was given there, the carbon is on the product side, that is incorrect, and it has a stoichiometric coefficient of a two, that is also incorrect. So I'm gonna do two things to reaction number one up above. Number one, I'm gonna place the car, I'm gonna switch it so that I place the carbon on the correct side that's on the reactant side. So that is flipping the reaction, that is multiplying it by a negative number. I'm also going to multiply the entire reaction number one so that I get a stoichiometric coefficient of a one for carbon. And so what, what number do I need to multiply two by to get convert that two into a one? I'm gonna multiply that by a one half. So I'm gonna multiply that entire reaction by a negative and a one half, and that's what I get. So I flipped it and I multiplied by a, a negative and a one half, and that 786 now is multiplied by a negative one half. So that is a negative 393. So now I have the numbers here that I want. I'm gonna add these up. I'm gonna also check to make sure that things cancel out so that when I add the redesigned reactions, one, two, and three, after the flips and the multiplication, that they do truly add up to what I have circled in the blue at the bottom. Okay, so you should see that the carbon dioxides cancel out. It's just like a math problem. So if you have an X on one side and an X on the other side, they both cancel out. If you had a two X on one side and a two X on the other side, they both cancel out. One's on the reactant, one's on the product. They have the same formula. They have the same stoichiometric coefficient. So the carbon dioxides have canceled out. Also, the waters have canceled out. One of the waters is on the reactant side. One of them is on the product side and they both have stoichiometric coefficients of two. So they're both gone as well. Now I need to take a look at the oxygens. So the oxygens, in reaction number two that's been modified, um, that reaction has a two stoichiometric coefficient in front of the oxygen. And then there's oxygens in reactions one and three, but they both have a stoichiometric coefficient of a one. So they sum up to two. So therefore, those have canceled out. Now I want you to look at everything that I have not canceled out. Everything that I have not canceled out is a carbon on the reactant side two hydrogens on the reactant side, and one CH4, that is a methane, on the product side. So that means that these three reactions, after the modification of multiplication, or uh, multiplication of negative numbers, or flipping, and multiplication of uh, negative numbers, or a multiplication of a stoichiometric coefficient, that is, they do sum up to that blue equation that's circled there. So since that is the case, that is my check, now I can add up the yellow numbers and I should be able to get this number as negative 73 kilojoules, okay? 
Another thing that you should note about that delta H for this reaction at negative 73 kilojoules, that negative tells you that this is an exothermic reaction. That is, the temperature is increasing and there is a liberation of heat from the system to the surroundings. Okay, that is a Hess's Law calculation. Review that very well and review the previous couple of lectures so that you understand the hints on it and some of the processes with the Hess's Law calculation. Okay, um, I'll read this hat for you. It's, if this hat's a missing, I've gone a fishing. So, so, give me a thumbs up if you like that video. It's pretty complicated. Review it again. Subscribe to my YouTube channel, and I will see you next time for another problem. Bye now.